I broke through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Jump back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows ekrastic. I get drastic. Hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. Welcome to the MacGuffin. I'm Spencer, and today I'm joined by a whole slew of guests, the cast of Fat Kid Rules the World. Um, why don't you guys introduce yourselves and give them a little background? I'm Billy Campbell. I am a, a, a thespian. Uh, well, yeah. 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 Uh, I'm Jacob Wysocki, and uh, I was uh, formerly uh, the Egyptian god Emotep. Uh, my name is Matt O'Leary. And I am an actor. <laughs> um, so this is, you know, ultimately a film about friendship and understanding and all that stuff. Um, <laughs> you have this drug um, storyline running through the film. How do you balance the humor with the seriousness and not skew too much towards, like, say, Harold and Kumar, or skew too much towards Requiem for a Dream? How do you balance this as an actor and with the story? I think it's all about finding just, I mean, the truth in the comedy, because that's, that's good comedy. It's not shtick, it's not parody, it's, it's relatable and it's honest, and so you just want to treat it with respect. You know, you want to find what's real and what people will relate with, and that sort of naturally creates humor. It's sort of innate when you're just being honest because people relate to the honesty and as people we want to find humor. We, we, we accept it. It's better than being sad. So as long as you're being honest and relatable I think that humor kind of comes naturally and appropriately rather than being like, we're getting so baked bro! Like, you know, you, 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 treat, it, you treat it as it would happen in, in real life. Ooh, thank you, Billy. Um, yeah, I second that 100%. You know, honesty is, is definitely where you find some of the best humor. But I think, you know, serious moments in life, serious things that happen to people, there's a lo I, I think a lot of people get confused thinking if it's a serious moment that it's not funny. My dad died when I was 15, and it was a long ordeal. And there was a lot of jokes flying around from him, from me, and it kind of helped the process. So and it's, it affected it's me for a mechanism. long time. It's a coping mechanism. Also, it just it helps you like pay your love, you know, to the moment. You know that this is like a tearing moment in your life. Whether it's getting over drug abuse, whether it's about to kill yourself, whether it's being too fat to fit in. No pun intended. Like whatever that is, as long as it's serious, and as long as you're being honest to the moment, you'll find the comedy in it. I think, anyway, and that way you're not going too far to one end, you know, you're not going to the Harold and Kumar side of things, and then, you know, I, I think that you're not being unrealistic by taking it too seriously, you know, I mean, I think you look at these moments that are serious moments and you handle them with care of, of being honest, you know. Well said. Uh, Billy, in terms of, you know, playing the father, you had an interesting role because you changed. I mean, initially, I mean, you were an unlikable guy, like you were not easy to uh, relate to, but you kind of evolve and begin to understand your son, you begin to appreciate Matt's character, and ultimately you become sort of a surrogate father to him and sort of the one who pushes your son to become this kid who rules the world, so to speak. Um, what was that journey like, and how do you sort of make your character relatable? Because, as I said, you know, initially I was like, oh, this is not going to be a guy I can relate to at all. <clears throat> I, I, I don't know, really. Uh, um, I sort of joined late, and, and, um, and I just kind of put myself in, in Matthew's care, in Matthew Lillard's uh, care and and uh, trusted that he knew what he wanted it, it, it I, I guess the only thing I sort of had going on or that I was thinking of was to um, to try to do it honestly I mean I, I never when I finally did read the script and I, I didn't read it until I was actually on my way to the job but when I finally did read the script um, it, it didn't seem to me that it was a character that was that was going to be unsympathetic. I mean, even even in a even in a moment that is not apparently sympathetic, uh, if it's played with honesty, it, it ends up 
being sympathetic. Do you know what I mean? I, I don't know if that makes any sense at all. Well, I remember when I was auditioning, uh, when I first auditioned for my role, one of the things I said, you know, you, you kind of have like some small talk with the director and the producers. I was like, I want a poster of Mr. Billings. After I read the script, I was like, I need it right next to Captain Picard on my wall. Like, he, Mr. Billings is amazing because you see, like, you, I just, I just loved how you brought this discipline, this accepted discipline that made kids that hate discipline almost be like, oh, well, there's a point to it. And why there's a point, why are parents so hard on their kids? Because Mr. Billings does show the amount of love, you know, yeah. and, and the encouragement and affirmation that I he, think he that's gives what to makes his children. Like the, the, that level of like hardness and, and rigidity okay is that it's all in love, it's all in, in compassion. And Jacob and Matt, you guys had a difficult challenge of, you know, balancing the sort of straight man, comedic relationship. Um, what was that like, you know, sort of taking on that role and not um, losing uh, perspective of your character and sort of finding it and keeping it realistic and honest? Uh, Ooh, that thing's heavy, dude. It's, uh, for me, that's one of the, the, the harder things. I'm just going to press on. No, you press, press on. on. I don't really understand the question. Like he the hit himself. In the head with the microphone. Walk away. Um, I thought it was, it was, it's a little harder for me because I'm a guy that wants to be really funny, and, and that's, that's what I'm comfortable doing. I mean, you are funny. Yeah, but, it, but it, it's, a, it's this, like, it's, it's very dialed back. It's very small and and it's funny because it's small um but so i had a lot of like inclinations of wanting to be sort of big and funny and and, and loud and make all these funny choices but i don't think that like troy wouldn't do that that's just not how he operated you know he was he was more of a flat line and marcus was jumping everywhere and i filled the gaps um so i think it was just a lot of like lillard being like you know bring it back and, and dial it in and like remember that we're in some point like we we, we we became pretty good friends so so there was yeah, a point good. where you know, yeah we became great friends no and no got I to get a point. it I get it bro it's our producer he we can, can edit do whatever that, he wants yeah. I guess we got to a point where Matt was like you're being too buddy buddy because you're not there yet in the movie so we had to oh my god Nick Morton Oh Nick my Martin. God! There's an interview going on here. You oh my! Come here, Nick. Apologize. Produce an apology. I'm sorry. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. I'm gonna let Matt take this away. Oh yeah. So I. Yeah. What, what was the what was the question? Comparing myself to the character, pretty Just much. How to, the comedic, how to get into the the. Just keeping your, you know, balancing the comedic role versus his straight role. Oh yeah, I've always played kind of the bad guy straight thing until just recently, uh, and I don't think I've ever had the chance to actually show how crazy I actually am. I'm a little, I'm a little nuts, and I thought it would be fun to apply that aspect of my life to this character. And I think the biggest thing that I had to do was keep it straight. You know, I can be as big as I want as long as I have a reason and I'm honestly going to these places. I'm not going there to, you know, dance and entertain. I'm going there because this is where the character needs to go. Anyway. Uh, last thing, anything you guys want to plug that you guys have coming up that we can look forward to seeing you in in the future? March 17th, I've got a movie coming out that I did with my sketch group called Boner Police. Uh, so that's great, and everybody should look out for it. April 1st, uh, the second season of a show I'm doing uh, for AMC called The Killing uh, comes out. And, and uh, it's, it'll be even more intense than the first season was. I am Matthew J. O'Leary uh, on Twitter. So follow me. I'd like to plug my Twitter. I just started. I'm really good at it. And Lone Ranger. I, I got a small role in Lone Ranger coming up. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, pretty badass. My makeup's crazy. You won't even recognize me. I dare you to find Waldo. Waldo being me. That was weird. Uh, well, thank you guys so much. Congratulations on the film. And you can find more interviews at MacGuffinPodcast.com. Thank you. Well, I was going to. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>
can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. This type don't even try to buy the sun. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.